I recently made a video on how you can have observability with Next.js in the server, but it's actually very useful to have in the front end too. So if you're not familiarized with traces, with spans, with observability, let's say you want to upload a file all in your front end. Well, that entails a lot of different steps. So the first one would be to initiate the whole process. So you'd have a function that is upload file, and that takes all of the necessary parameters, the data of the file you're uploading, and it will internally call other functions. So here, this would be the initiator. So this is the parent span. So a span is a work of unit. Now you can define a span however you want. You can say the whole process of uploading a file is a span in itself, but usually you dissect it and you create a span per work of unit. So what do I mean by this? Well, upload file is the initiator, so it is the parent span of everything. Then you create the file in the database. So you'd have another function that is create file in DB, you pass in the parameters, it calls your API, gets the response, whatever. That's a work of unit. So create file in DB, the function is a span. But this calls a put operation. You can consider this another span. So create file in DB is the actual initiator of the request. But well, it internally has this child process. Then once this is over, so once we have created the file in the database, we have another span parallel to it, and that is get pre-signed URL. So in this one, you have again two spans the one for get pre-signed URL, and then you have the span for calling S3 and getting the pre-signed URL, which is the actual get request. So again, we have two spans, and then you have upload to S3. So this is another span, and this one calls put. And once all of this is done, you have successfully created your file. And all of this is encompassed in something known as a trace. And that makes sense because this is the trace of the whole flow. You can observe every single step. Now, this is very useful because with telemetry, if you have a span collector, you can have timings for these spans, for these work of units. So you can see that the whole operation, so the whole trace, took 4.7 seconds. But if you look at each span individually, you can see that create file in DB took almost a second. So you can see how long this operation actually took. Then the get pre-signed URL, that took almost two seconds. Now you can start visualizing how long every single work of unit takes and helps you identify the bottlenecks of the whole flow. Then we have upload to S3 and this took two seconds. And well, since this is the last spun, we have finished the whole trace. Now I'm using Jiger UI for this. You can use whatever you want. This is just for demonstration purposes. But if I come here to this trace here, for example, and then instead of seeing this as a timeline, which is the most common way to visualize this, I go over to the graph. We can see it a little bit clearer. So as you can see, upload file is the initiator and this called create file in DB is called put. Then this finished and so this initiated this one and this called the get operation. Then this finished and then we uploaded to S3 and then this called the put. So as you can see, this is a great way to visualize all of your calls. You can see the timings here. You can see in percentage how much it took for the whole trace. You can see the service to which it pertains to. So as you can see, my service. This is useful if you have multiple applications, maybe a mobile application, a web application, a desktop application. So you can name these services accordingly. So you can can 
filter by these services here. So if you had a web and mobile and desktop, you would find them here and you can filter through them. So you can limit the results. You can check the duration and the look back last hour, last five minutes, a custom time range. You can even add tags. And the most interesting of all, is you can attach events to the spans. So ideally, what you log within each call, you would be able to visualize that data here. So what do I mean by this? Well, if I come here to create a file in database, as you can see, the parent span doesn't have any events because I didn't log anything at the root, but I logged an event here when creating the file in the database. And if I come here, click on logs, we can see every single log. And here we get the event created file with ID 95. So we can append events to these spans and you can visualize them here. For example, the get presigned URL, got presigned URL. Now, what about errors? Well, if I come here, we have this one with two errors. So as we can see, it failed when uploading to S3. And if I open this up, we get two logs. We get our log, which is failed to upload to S3. And then since we threw an exception, we get the stack trace and some extra information. So notice how ergonomic this is. You can pinpoint exactly what failed and why it failed. And that's why logs themselves aren't that useful because you may see a log fail to upload to S3, but you might not be familiarized with the system. You're not sure what went wrong. Well, all of these can be observed if you add a spans to everything. And lastly, if you come back to the index page, here you can filter by operation. So you can come here to upload to S3, find traces, and now you can see all of the traces that had this operation, this work of unit. So how did I do this? Well, for that, I created this Docker Compose. This is for Jiger. I set the course headers, so you can set them up here, then the ports and some extra information. Then for the collector, if I come here to live, then up runtime, I'm using open telemetry. And for this, I'm using effect. So I created the layer, the web SDK layer. And then here I return the service name. So here you can pass in the web production name, the sandbox name, whatever you want. And then the processor. So we send the traces over to localhost which is where our Jagger instance is running. And then I created the runtime by supplying this live layer. Now, as for the code itself, if you're using effect, which honestly you should be using it, it is the standard library for TypeScript. All you need to do is say effect dot with spun, and then you pass in the name of the spun, and then you can pass in some attributes. So for debugging purposes, you can see the name of the file, the size, etc. Here I'm just simulating some requests. So I sleep for this range and I assign a span to this. So as you can see, everything is just a one liner. You only need to say effect dot with span and then you compose your effects with this. And this is great because effect will automatically establish the child to parent relation. So this is a child. So we composed this effect with this span and then we compose the parent one with this span. So effect knows that this is the parent for this one. And so recursively, if this actual call to create the file in the database had a more internal spans, then all of them would be automatically associated with their corresponding parents. Then the get presigned, we do the same. We say with span, with span, and then we yield an effect.log. So these are the events that are automatically appended over to the span. If you're using effect, of course, otherwise you'd have to instrument all of this manually. You'd have to associate the parent with the child. You'd have to append the events. So way more boilerplate with effect, just one liners and you're good to go. Then we do the same upload to S3. We have this condition right here to simulate errors. And again, we log error and we fail this. Otherwise we log upload it to S3 and we set some attributes. And then we get to the initiator of everything, which is upload file. 
after we create a file in database, we get the pre-signed URL, we upload to S3, and then we annotate this with a span to upload file. And that's it. Now the consumer just runs this with the runtime and you're good to go. It is now going to send over the traces periodically. So now when you come here, click on upload file, it is going to send them over in the network. So again, upload file, it is batching them. So sends them over something like every five seconds by default. And then if I come here and then find the traces once again, as we can see, we get a few seconds ago and the this one too a few seconds ago and they didn't fail and again we can visualize everything so make sure to set up traces in your front-end and back-end applications this way you can have full observability so this now wraps up the video i hope you learned something and if you want to see more content like this make sure to subscribe i'll see you in the next one see ya